55 sì Sì Prova, prova 1 2 3 prova, prova Da Parma Bene, provo gli altri microfoni. Prova, 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 prova. C'è tre microfoni. Prova, prova, prova. Uno, due, tre, prova. Prova, prova, uno, due, tre, prova, prova. Prova. Gli altri giocatori della Spagna Vabbè, no, che non hanno Vabbè, non hanno L'anno non ha chiamato Vabbè,
jeszcze po prostu z Siamo allo stadio Nino Cavalli per l'incontro tra l'Italia e la Spagna, quarto impegno della nazionale azzurra in questo torneo di qualificazione olimpica. Italia eh, reduce dalla sconfitta con Israele eh, dopo l'inno di Mameli. Intanto le squadre sono eh, schierate eh, sul campo dopo l'inno di Mameli. Adesso suona la marcia real spagnola.
e quindi gli inni nazionali hanno dopo la cerimonia degli inni nazionali le squadre si salutano sul campo i manager e gli arbitri si incontrano e, quindi Italia, Spagna quarto impegno Italia reduce dall'incontro con Israele dopo le due vittorie con il Sudafrica e la Repubblica Ceca eh, io sono Vezio Razzi con me c'è Matteo Gandini ciao Matteo ciao, buonasera, buonasera anche amici a casa e Paolo Ceccaroli benvenuto Paolo ciao, buonasera a tutti eh, un incontro che è insidioso comunque l'Italia eh, ha subito questa brutta sconfitta 10 a 2 dopo eh, 8 7 inning e mezzo combattuti l'Italia nell'ottavo è ceduto e ha subito 6 punti di seguito da Israele il momento di svolta forse l'infortunio eh, al nostro eh, all'uomo su cui un po' tutti quanti puntavano eh, nella squadra Chris Colabello Sì, Colabello che eroicamente sarà in campo quest'oggi con mascherina per proteggere il naso infortunato ma non fratturato fortunatamente la cosa importante è che ieri la sconfitta con Israele ci ha sbarrato la strada verso la qualificazione diretta ai giochi olimpici questa partita quella di domani con l'Olanda anticipata alle ore 12 per il maltempo sono invece le ultime chance che l'Italia ha di passare dal successivo preolimpico quindi c'è ancora una porta aperta non apertissima ma ancora discretamente larga per provare a infilarci ai giochi olimpici bisogna però vincere sicuramente la gara di domani con l'Olanda e anche quella con la Spagna la Spagna ha perso 3-0 con Israele all'apertura ha vinto contro il il Sudafrica per 7 a 1 e con l'Olanda ha perso per 6 a 2 intanto questo è il line up azzurro l'infortunio di Colabello ovviamente ha portato necessariamente delle modifiche Maggi batte come lead off ma si schiera esterno eh, sinistro invece che a eh, terza base Alessandro Vaglio in seconda Chris Colabello è designato mentre Mazzanti e giocherà in prima base Cristo Labello infortunato come abbiamo detto al naso colpito da una palla al naso Mattia Reginato è esterno, sin esterno destro eh, posizione in genere occupata da John Andreoli che invece giocherà esterno centro Gavin Cecchini è sempre a interbase Maggi a catcher al posto di Mineo e batte ottavo al posto di Ceni Eric Epifano eh, a in terza base e eh, su Monte di Lancio abbiamo Murilo Guvea sul Monte di Lancio eh, spagnolo invece ci sarà una nostra conoscenza è eh, Noghera che eh, gioca con la Fortitudo Bologna dove ha vinto due scudetti e una Coppa dei Campioni è una squadra che è piena di talenti la Spagna, mentre ieri abbiamo visto Israele ricca di talenti che vengono dagli Stati Uniti eh, la Spagna ha eh, delle mazze e delle, dei braccia, delle braccia che arrivano dal Sud America dove eh, anche lì il livello di gioco è altissimo Paolo, sì. che partita aspetta l'Italia? Eh, come hai detto tu sarà proprio importante per Guvea avere molta cautela perché sono battitori di, di, di buona qualità eh, sono di scuola venezuelana la maggioranza eh, Rodriguez mi sembra che sia domenicano comunque come hai detto tu la scuola è sudamericana perciò eh, molto pratici sanno giocare veterani conoscono molti di loro conoscono il campionato italiano eh, Gustari, Sangulo lo stesso Rodriguez ha giocato a Nettuno quest'anno oltre a Noghera, Hernandez altro lanciatore eh, che ha lanciato anche lui a Nettuno e conoscono anche molto bene la nostra nazionale perché hanno, si, si sono incontrati negli ultimi anni parecchie volte e in più anche al torneo di preparazione all'europeo a Barcellona hanno fatto una serie di mi sembra tre o quattro partite dove le, le due nazionali si sono, hanno fatto un rodaggio per l'europeo hanno un buon manager lui so ah, sì. un veterano major leaguer sia da giocatore che ora da coach l'anno scorso era con gli Yankees come bench coach ehm, uno di quelli che in America Latina lo chiamano un signor pelotero cioè un signor giocatore eh sì, ha vinto quattro volte la World Series lui so da sì. giocatore era un utility sì. veramente di un'efficacia un incredibile pur and they bounce back from that disappointing Opening night defeat fell behind early in a game against South Africa, but 
Then the offense started coming and didn't stop. Spain won that game seven to one over South Africa. And then the loss last night to the Netherlands. It was 6-1, but got pretty tight. Bases were loaded in the ninth inning for Spain as they tried to make a late comeback. Unable to do it, though. And now with one pitch, how about that for the start from Nagara? He gets Maji to ground out to third. You can score that one 5-3. We'll see Alessandro Valio. It'll be interesting to see what kind of effort we get from Italy tonight. A really disheartening and I dare say demoralizing defeat last night. A game that was tied at two into the eighth inning. A six run top of the eighth was Italy's undoing. And it was not your conventional six run top half of the eighth inning either. There was only two hits in that inning. Couple of errors, couple of hit batsmen. It was a mess, for lack of a better word. And it came right after Chris Colabello had been hit and knocked out of the game in the bottom of the seventh. So that was a really tough swing to lose arguably your best hitter, your heart and soul player in Colabello, and then not have anywhere to go but down after you fall down by one, two, three, and just all of a sudden it's a six run deficit that you need to overcome in the last two innings and just wasn't going to happen. Now the one, one pitch up high. Valio was a bright spot last night. He had two hits and was on base three times. Two singles, a walk, he did strike out twice. Three Israeli pitchers combined to hold Italy to just the two runs last night. Valio sprays a foul out of play. Very glad to see Chris Colabello back in the lineup. It was a scary moment when the ball went up and in and all of a sudden he was pouring blood from between his eyes. Now the 2-2 to Valio. Popped up foul out of play. The thing with that was you could tell it hadn't been a direct hit. It's not like it hit him high in the head and he dropped down and you had to wait for him to get up. No, he kept his feet the whole time. He turned and immediately started walking towards his third base side dugout seeking medical attention, seeking something to put pressure on his face to stop the bleeding. We went into a delay of more than five minutes as they tried to see if they could close him up and keep him in the game, but it just was too much to overcome in the time allotted. And now Valio hits it hard on the ground, but right at Angulo at second, who makes the play for out number two. Colabello went down into the clubhouse. They applied some more treatment, but then ultimately we saw Bo Maggi come out to run, and that's when you knew Colabello's night was done, and now you hear the hand as he is announced and comes up to bat wearing a little bit of a Makeshift shield over his nose. Trying to keep him from suffering any further injury, obviously. Haven't heard any official reports as to whether or not the nose was technically broken last night. I would be shocked if it wasn't. And look at the numbers he's produced in this tournament. A 500 average, seven RBIs, a home run. He drove in Italy's only two runs last night. He had in the at-bat prior to the time he was hit. And now he gets under it, sends it sky high into short left field. Rodriguez back from his shortstop position and he drops it. Colabello overruns second meanwhile. And Oscar Angulo is pretty sure that he tagged him after he fell off the base. Not a very pretty play in any way. Should have been a can of corn to end the inning. I'm not sure why Lester Galvan was so tardy in coming in. That's a much easier play for the left fielder. But Rodriguez was left with it the whole time. Here's the throw to second. And that tag might have gotten him in Spain. is challenging. You see Colabello jogging around the first base bag, expecting that pop-up to be caught. Oh, yeah, he's out. And that's just a badly missed call at second base. I mean, there was nothing good about that play, which I believe will end the inning. 
Bad job dropping the pop-up. Bad job Colabello not hustling out of the box and around the infield. Bad job with the call at second, but they get it right in the end, and that'll be it for the first inning. Wow, an error, but an out at second, and just three Italian batters come up in the top half of the first. We'll go to the bottom of the first. No score. Let's hope things tighten up here in Parma. Angel Beltre will lead off for Spain. Beltre, Valerio, and Angulo. After a really kind of sorry top half of the first inning. That play was not up to the caliber of this tournament, but we'll catch up. The 8 o'clock start under the lights. And again, it's Spain's first game here in Parma. And so it's the first night looking up into a different set of lights. And as Odd an excuse as that may sound, it may have played a difference. <laughs> and now pop up off the end of the bat, third base side. And that time it's caught, this time by Cicchini. And Beltre's retired on just a couple of pitches. We're giving Leo Rodriguez the benefit of the doubt that there was something about what he was looking up into that made it harder to judge that foul ball, or that fly ball rather. And in the end, Italy gets the out. I think it'll go down as an error on the drop pop fly. And then a six to four put out. Now it's Edison Valerio. Right-handed hitting third baseman. Takes one just outside, one ball, one strike. Valerio and Angulo coming up next here in the bottom half of the first inning. The right handed starter, Murillo Govea. In a very quiet motion, he starts his feet parallel to the rubber. And then he rips that one past the swing of Valerio. Two and two. A foul ball first base side, and you see on that view just how much room there is in foul ground. And we've seen some adventurous pop-ups in that foul area. Two-two pitch. Little bit upstairs for a full count, three and two. Looks like some lively stuff tonight from Govea. A 
And a good battle here from Valerio. Angulo, the second baseman, who applied the tag on Chris Colabello, and I thought he overran the base, but he never even touched the base. And a chopper foul here is a good heads up play by Angulo. Keeping the tag on Colabello as he tried to then backpedal and find the second base bag. It wasn't a case where he took a step and then started to round the bag, he just missed it. And Angulo was wise to it, and he was right on top of the play. And now he chops one that's going to be a tough play to make. Barehanded and thrown to first, but no play really for Gouveia. And that'll be an infield single. And something developing here for Spain, though. The two base runners combined have hit the ball about 40 feet. A walk and a single. Here's Jesus Ustariz. He's got a lot of thunder in that bat. We, he can make a difference here. A loss for Italy tonight wouldn't be ideal, but it also wouldn't be the end of the world in terms of finishing in second place. It would take them out of contention for a first place finish, though. So in that sense, it would be the end of the initial goal of this tournament. But it's kind of out of their hands now. If Israel wins tonight, then Israel's going to the Olympics. But if Italy loses tonight, and then were to beat the Netherlands tomorrow, they'd have a very good shot of earning the second place berth. They'd have it locked up if Spain loses tomorrow. Spain takes on the Czech Republic in the nightcap here in Parma. That'll be played right alongside the Italy-Netherlands game in Bologna in terms of time, 8 o'clock p.m. local time. And pitch down low. And a 2 and one count. So we will have meaningful baseball all night tomorrow night. But it just might be for second place. And we'll keep you informed of what's going on in Bologna tonight in the Israel game. Israel-Czech Republic. High pop fly. Right side of the infield, the batter's out. The catch made by Valio. Valerio remains at second, Angulo at first. And now we'll see Lester Galvan. Close pitch, ball one. You heard the groans from Italy's dugout. And they wanted that call. Back at second. And a strike, two and one. Gouveia seems to be the pitcher who can really have pinpoint accuracies, like throwing darts out there. 
two one a breaking ball foul back two and two. Working in no particular hurry, takes a long look in. And the fastball sails up and away, full count, three and two. A walk here would load him up. Dangerous hitter and Fernando Martinez on deck. The runners will be off, so a single could and probably should give Spain the lead. Big pitch, three and two. There go the runners, and we'll get to do it again as it's fouled back off the railing directly behind home plate. Three, two, number two, and we'll get a third. Three, two again, and we will have a fourth full count pitch. Really good battle here, and that one might have broken Lester Galvan's bat. This first inning, which has seen just a couple of base runners, now 20 minutes in. Which side will give first? Runners go again and again. It's popped up out of play. Mr. Galvan's going to run us out of balls here in the first inning. Love from Govea. And it's a hard ground ball into left field. Up with it is Maggi, his throw to the plate. Oh, it's a slide and he's safe. Bo Maggi couldn't squeeze the one hop throw. One nothing Spain. Great throw from Drew Maggi who's been playing third throughout this tournament. Charged in from left field where he gets the start tonight. Throws a strike to his brother Bo and oh it would have been awfully close and he squeezed that in his glove before lunging to his right to make the tag. You see the right arm of Edison Valerio touching home plate. Giving Spain the one nothing lead. I'm really surprised to see Oscar Angulo just on second. I don't know how you don't advance on that throw to the plate especially when Catcher doesn't come up with it cleanly. It's a bit of a break for Italy to have Angulo at second and Galvan at first. Really should be second and third now. Fernando Martinez. Takes the one strike pitch low. Things even up at one and one. Sixth batter here for Spain in the bottom of the first. And it's another chopper, this one gloved. It's sent to first, 
Really rotten throw, but a tremendous pick by Giuseppe Masanti to bail out Marilla Govea and end the first inning. A run on two hits for Spain with two men left. We'll go to the second. It's 1-0 Spain. Giuseppe Masanti, who made a really nice pick at first base to end the first inning, leads off the second against the left-hander Antonio Noguera. And he goes ahead, one ball and no strikes. one nothing Spain, a run on two hits. An RBI single for Lester Galvan at the end of a really lengthy and exciting battle between he and Mur Murilo Govea. Which he fouled off a half dozen 3-2 pitches before ripping one into left, but we could have had an out to end the inning without a run being scored and out at home plate at that. Well, Maji was unable to take in the throw from his brother Drew, and now it's bouncing down into the left field corner, and it'll be a leadoff double for Giuseppe Masanti. Matia Reginato, the right fielder, comes up now and potentially what will be a bunting spot. We've seen teams somewhat reluctant to go to the bunt, but this is a situation where it might make a lot of sense just to try and tie this game back up, but it doesn't appear as if that's the plan as he takes a strike bell tie pretty much right down the middle. That would have been the pitch to bunt if you were going to. Now down and in, and no swing. One, one pitch. Missed upstairs. Naguera, who's from Caracas, Venezuela, is 35 years old. He had some time in the major league system. Takes a strike here, does Reginato. And neither side's been really thrilled by the strike zone so far.
And Nogueira, though, he's from Venezuela, an Italian citizen who's been playing in Italy with Netuno. His 2-2 popped up towards first. Ustariz racing back, and he makes the catch. There was Oscar Angulo, the second baseman there as well, and they nearly collided. You could tell right off the bat it wasn't going to be an easy play. And they actually did bump one another, Ustariz and Angulo. More often than not on a ball like that, you will see the second baseman claim it and take it, but I think it was, in this case, an easier play for Ustariz. And the best news for Spain is that Masanti is still on second with one out now as John Andrioli takes a look at strike one. Andrioli tripled his first time up last night. He walked in the sixth. He went one for three in all. Came up in a big spot in the seventh. Came up with runners on second and third in the bottom of the seventh when the game was still tied at two. That was just a few batters after Chris Colabello had been hit in the face and been knocked out of the game. Alberto Mineo had struck out for the second out of the inning and Andrioli went down swinging as well. And after that, it was all Israel. Andrioli takes a pretty close 0-2 pitch high. After that bottom of the seventh, which was the second time that Italy had left runners on second and third, and they'd had runners on second and third with less than two outs and failed to score. It happened in the first, and then it happened again in the seventh. Right after that time in the seventh inning is when Italy gave up the six runs that Israel just kept pouring on and didn't look back. Still two and two as he's battling. Asante who doubled, still on second. The left-hander with a glance back at him before the pitch that's popped up again behind the first base bag. This will be an easier play for Jesus Ustaris who makes that catch for out number two. Here's Gavin Cicchini. Cicchini, the New York Mets prospect. The last guy to join this team coming directly from the end of the AAA season in North America, the highest minor league level AAA in North America. He takes strike one. Originally from Louisiana. You see he has that wide open stance with his front leg flexed really low. Nogueira's 0-1. Is hit in the air fairly deep to left. This one's got the height. Does it have the distance? No, it does not. What a great run and grab made by Lester Galvan who puts his team ahead with a single in the bottom of the first and then makes the catch that ends the inning and keeps the game 1-0 after one and a half. We'll be back in 90 seconds here on a beautiful Saturday night in Parma.
run on two hits in the first for Espana, and that's the difference right now. And an update from Bologna, where the Czech Republic has a 1-0 lead on Israel. And it's still possible that we could finish this tournament with three teams tied at 4-1. and one. The Netherlands winning today, they're 3-1. and one. Should Israel falter tonight, they'd be 3-1. and one. Should Italy win this game tonight, you're looking at a third 3-1 and one team heading into the final day of play. And as soon as I say that, let me walk it back because Italy and the Netherlands will play tomorrow night. But most will have two teams tied at four and one. So even if Israel loses tonight, there's a good chance that they will advance if they're able to take care of business against South Africa tomorrow because no matter who they would wind up tied with, be it the Netherlands or Italy, if there are going to be two four and one teams and one of them's Israel. Well, Israel owns the tiebreaker over both, having beaten them both each of the last two days. That pitch is up high. It's three and two. You can see a little bit of frustration on the person of Marilo Govea who felt he made the pitch. So they get a called third strike, didn't get the call, and now it's a payoff coming to Monzon. And it's down and in. Ball four, second walk issued by Govea. That's how the second batter of the bottom of the first reach was by the walk. That's the man who scored in Valerio. And now it's Blake Ochoa. Fastball high, and Bo Maggi looked like he had some trouble making the transfer into his throwing hand. Alberto Mineo has been the catcher for Italy through the first three games. Maggi gets the start tonight. That was a really good jump from Monzon, too. So it wasn't as if there was only a bobble to blame for the easy stolen base. There may not really have even been a bobble, just a judgment by Maji that he didn't have a chance to make that play. Now big swing and a miss from Ochoa, who's all of a sudden batting with a man in scoring position, though he finds himself down 0-2. Righty-on-righty -righty matchup, another right-hander in Rodriguez waiting on deck. 1-1. Two balls and one strike. Lashed foul, first base side out of play. There's some stirring down in Italy's bullpen in the right field corner. So it doesn't look like anybody's quite getting ready in earnest yet. The 2-2 two -two pitch here is just low for ball three. Nobody out here, bottom second. Zone, a pretty decent lead off second base. He hops towards third as the pitch is again fouled right field side out of play. They're in the top of the third inning with the Czech Republic leading Israel 1-0. Czech Republic's 1-2 in the tournament, Israel 3-0. South Africa earlier today lost 7-1 to one to the Netherlands. As we get a cold third strike, and Ochoa was on his way to first before he turned around upon hearing the news. 
I'm not sure what Blake Ochoa thought he got, but that was a perfect pitch for strike three. A tight slider, thigh high over the outer third. That was a great pitch. So South Africa, the only winless team in the tournament thus far. They've gone to extra innings. That was against Italy when they went to extra innings. They nearly beat Italy in what would have been a rain-shortened game had they cashed in on an opportunity in the bottom of the fifth when the game was tied 4-4. South Africa had a man on third with one out, failed to plate him, and then in the sixth, the rain came, and that's what suspended the game on Wednesday night, the first night of the tournament. That game was picked up yesterday morning, and that's when Italy wanted an extra innings. South Africa led Spain 1-0 into the fourth. They led the Czech Republic 1-0 into the fourth as well, but they failed to score more than that one run in both of those contests. And as you see, or as you may have heard just a moment ago, again today, just the one run for South Africa. So they've had their chances. They've had their leads. But 0-4, sixth place in the tournament heading into the final day. Bounces in the dirt, breaking for third. Monzoni's head first slide, good enough to get him 90 feet from scoring what will be Spain's second run if he can come home. That's the kind of play where you can't afford to hesitate, and he didn't. As soon as it splashed down in the dirt, as you saw, a really nice block from Bo Maggi, but as soon as it went down, he went off. And lines up safely on third base, holding on to it with every part of his person. And with just the one out, that's huge. Rodriguez can bring him home so many ways. The infield for Italy now drawn in on the grass, and Rodriguez rolls it under the dive of Masanti. And there's the second run for Spain, a 2-0 lead. Smart baseball by Javier Monzon. With one out, he got himself to third. And because the infield is drawn in, that ball gets through, whereas if everybody's back at their usual depth, Mazzanti has more time to move to his right and get to that ball. Rodriguez will take it. He's happy to have an RBI single. And a really strong start from Spain, 2-0. Just one out in the home half of the second. Runner goes, the throw to second. It winds up in right center field, and Rodriguez is on his way to third. Now a lot of confidence from Spain on the base pads. And that was a bunt attempt. So it wasn't a straight steal. It wasn't a pitch that Beltre could get a bat to, but hey, he's nodding his head. He likes how it turned out. And now the Italian infield will get together on the mound and they're gonna get an earful. Dennis Cook, the pitching coach out there and he is not pleased. It has been a bit of a listless effort thus far from this Italian side. Obviously that disappointing defeat last night didn't sit well, but you really have to turn the page. So much still at stake. Beltre popped out to short in the first inning, and now he lines one out to right field, and with one out, that'll probably bring in another run. Here's the throw towards the plate, cut off, and it's 3-0 Spain. A walk and a single. All that Spain has this inning to have helped them to this two-run, 3-0 lead, two-run inning. But when you have a walk and a single and you complement those with a couple of stolen bases, uh, an extra base on a wild pitch, an extra base on an error, a well-placed ground ball, a timely fly ball, and good old-fashioned small ball paying off for Spain here. Edison Valerio 
who walked and scored in the first. Waits for the 0-1. A lazy breaking ball that stayed upstairs. Check swing, two and one. Round ball, left side, up with it, Epifano. And on to first, side retired. Two runs on one hit, nobody left for Spain. A productive second inning for the Spanish squad that'll lead it three nothing when we come back in the top of the third. Bo Maggi leading off, swings at the first pitch, sends it hopping foul past the first base bag. So one strike to start in the third inning. Italy in need of a little pushback. They've been getting pushed around through the first two frames. A run in the first inning, two in the second, as Spain has built a 3 nothing edge. Three runs, three hits, and an error that really didn't cost Spain anything. No runs, one hit, and an error for Italy. Oh, and to the count. A lefty lefty battle. Epifano, the right-handed hitter on deck, and then back to the top of the order and Drew Maggi. Just off the corner, one and two. They just announced over the loudspeaker that tomorrow's Finale in Bologna, the game scheduled for 8 o'clock between Italy and the Netherlands has been pushed up to 12 noon because of incoming inclement weather. One two pitch here is launched foul. I mean, that was <laughs> over the light tower, over everything. Bo played his college ball at Arizona State, Sun Devils. Waits for another one, two, swings and misses, and that's strike three. First strikeout of the evening for Antonio Noguera. Let's 
pitch is the second strikeout of the game, period. Blake Ochoa called out on strikes in the bottom of the second inning. And Eric, Eric Epifano comes up. So we don't know if there'll be any adjustment to the game times here in Parma. But again, tomorrow night's game in Bologna scheduled for 8 p.m. between Italy and the Netherlands. Now be 12 noon. The last day of the tournament, a lot of folks getting out of town. They'll want to play these games as early and as fast as possible tomorrow. Now ball hit really well out to right field. Going back after it is Monson, and he backpedals onto the warning track and makes the catch. Kind of a serpentine route to get there, but he wound up in the right place. Nice little display of opposite field power, too, from the number nine slot. And he turned and twisted back and wound up just facing the infield squarely as he made that catch. Not exactly the way you see it in the textbook, but gets the job done. And here's Drew Maggi with two outs and nobody on trying to find a way to extend the inning. Up high, 1-0. Oh. Looks like the rain in Bologna, at least tomorrow, is a near certainty in the second half of the day. You start to get a chance of rain about 11, 12 o'clock, and then by the evening, it seems near certain, and Drew Maggi rips it out to left field. It's gonna roll to the wall, and he'll be cruising into second with a two-out stand-up double. Second two-bagger of the night for Italy. Both of their hits have been doubles down into the wall in left field. The other belonging to Giuseppe Masanti, who led off the second with a double, but then never moved past second base. We'll see where Maggi ends up here. Remember, there's two outs. So Alessandro Valio will have to come up with something to keep the inning going. That was really solid contact for Maggi, who chopped out to third his last time up. Down low, one ball, no strikes. The forecast here in Parma, not much more favorable than that in Bologna. Chance of rain starts late morning, early afternoon, and then it becomes an increasing certainty later on in the day. I guess I use the term certainty a little bit loosely. and By nature, you can't really use that word loosely, so I'll withdraw it and say it's a very likely outcome, a rainy evening. Valio, a lot of shaking around in the box as he waits for a pitch that just misses outside. Three balls, no strikes, a couple of close pitches. If Valio reaches here, you're looking at the tying run at the plate in the form of Chris Colabello. Poured in though, it's three and one. If I'm Valio, I might take another one. An awfully tantalizing prospect, the thought of Colabello batting with a chance to tie it with one swing. A look back at second, the three one offering and a fly ball out to right field, moving to his left, Monson this time an easier trip to make the catch for the out that Ends the inning, everybody saying, calm down out there, Javier. It's the third out, and we're through two and a half, and it's three nothing Spain here in Parma.
Marilla Govea could use a smooth third inning here as he's faced well, six batters in the first, five more in the second. As he's fallen behind 3 0, starts in the three slot of this Spanish order. Oscar Angulo ahead 1 0. Takes a rip and foul tips it for a strike. Angulo, Ustariz, and Galvan, this trio has already collected two hits. Angulo had Spain's first hit with one out in the first inning. Galvan batting with two outs and two aboard. Delivered the game's first run with an RBI single into left field. Angulo now down one and two. That was a great battle. I'll remember that one when you think about this game in the first inning when we were still scoreless. Lester Galvan had the count at two and two, and then it went to three and two, and then he fouled off a full handful of pitches before driving the ball through the five six hole and giving his team the lead, although. Drew Maggi made a great throw from left field on one hop to the plate. His brother Bo couldn't squeeze it as he was already sliding to his right to apply the tag. And this one's shot out to center field, but it'll be right at Andrioli for the first out. We'll never know if Bo Maggi had squeezed that ball before lunging to his right, whether or not they would have gotten Edison Valerio at the plate, but it sure looked like there was time. But instead, just the RBI single. Where Galvan who moves into the on deck circle as Jesus Ustariz makes his second appearance in the right handed batter's box. Big swing and a miss, strike one. Ustariz popped out to Valio at second to become the second out at the bottom of the first. The game was still scoreless. There's the breaking ball from Govea. And a ground ball right side and into right field. A one out base hit. Fourth hit of the night for España. from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Less than a week removed from his 31st birthday. Guy who's been as high as the AAA level in the North American minor leagues, but never did quite make the majors. Fight his way through the early innings here. He could really use a zero up on the board. Keep his team within shouting distance here in the early portion of the game. Just missing inside falls behind Galvan two and nothing. Govea spent last winter pitching in Ciudad Obregón in Mexico. Finds a strike there. It's one and two. Thought it was two and oh, but he did get the call on one of the first two pitches. So ball and two strikes. And a high pop fly here. Playable on the left side. Cecchini the grab, two down. Galvan retired for the first time. Ustaris retreats to first. Prior to his season with the Yaquis de Obregón, Gobea pitched in Quebec, Canada. In the Can-Am League in 2017. Not often you see a guy go from pitching in Canada to pitching in Mexico. His last year in affiliated Pro Bowl was 2015 when he pitched 
briefly for the Fresno PCL club, the Houston AAA team, the Grizzlies, only made four appearances with Fresno in 2015. Only gave up a run on four hits in his four innings, but that was the end of a lengthy tenure with the Houston Astros organization, which began back in 2009. He gets a strike called, it's one and one, and you're starting to hear more from both dugouts now on every strike call. Fernando Martinez, one previous at bat, he bounced back to Govea, who actually kind of threw it away towards first and was bailed out by Masanti. Strike at the knees, one and two. Govea's busiest year as a minor leaguer was 2011. He had 31 appearances in the Astros minor league system. His one two is pop back foul. So we'll do at least one more here in the bottom half of the third inning with a man on first. Overall in seven minor league seasons. Marilo Govea appeared in 146 games, started 24 of them. Went 12 and 23 with a 4.74 earned run average. Piled up some strikeouts too. Has just the one so far tonight. He finished his minor league career with 382 strikeouts in 334 innings. So much better than a strikeout per inning average. Most seasons he finished with about 10 more strikeouts than he did innings pitched. He could use one here. And he gets it as Martinez couldn't check his swing of the breaking ball down and in, and that'll be all she wrote for the third. A man left on first, nothing more. We will go to the fourth, and Italy needs to get the bats back to life. They trail Spain, three nothing. Chris Colabello leading off the fourth. Swings at the first pitch, sends it high and deep into the night sky in Parma, and puts Italy on the board. That was a blast. And it's 3-1. You don't mess around with Chris Colabello, not the way he's hitting at this Europe Africa Olympic qualifier. His second home run of the tournament, his eighth RBI, and the spark his team so desperately needed to start this fourth inning. I didn't see it come down. I'm not sure it did yet. Giuseppe Masanti takes a moment before settling in himself. That was. A thing of beauty. 
And it really makes you think back to the seventh inning last night and shake your head at what a shame it was to have him forced out of the game when he was hit in the face. And then a bounce back tonight wearing a makeshift guard and do something like that. You could just feel the air go out of the building. You could almost hear it go out of the third base side dugout last night when it was decided that Chris Colabello, after about a six, seven minute delay, just wasn't going to be able to stop the bleeding in time to stay in the game. And it was just such a deflating moment. 0 2 to Mazzanti misses away. It's a ball and two strikes. At the time, the game was tied at two. And as he was hit by the pitch and wound up being replaced by Bo Maggi, there were runners on first and second for Italy in the bottom of the seventh of a 2 2 game with none out. Mazzanti selflessly went up and dropped down a sacrifice bunt as he skies one to right center here that's not going to have nearly the same distance and becomes out number one. I mean, a legend in Italian baseball, Giuseppe Masanti, doesn't get asked to drop down very many sacrifice bunts, but knowing the importance of last night's game and especially the situation he was placed in there in the seventh, not only was he asked to do it and he obliged, he dropped down a perfect sacrifice bunt to put the go-ahead run on third and insurance run, a potential insurance run in second, but then back-to-back -back strikeouts and... You could just see the balloon fizzling out, and then Israel comes up and scores six times in the eighth inning. It was quite the turn of events. And there was a gaping hole on the right side of the infield with Colabello lost. The game-winning run was scored on a squeeze bunt that was up the first baseline that Mazzanti was forced to charge. And a ball that he got to with time to glove it and flip it to the plate to potentially record what would have been the second out of the inning, but. The ball went into the glove and then just got almost comically thrown up in the air right out of the glove. Maybe cartoonishly is a better adjective or adverb, whatever it would be, than comically. But you just felt the loss of Chris Colabello all throughout the rest of the ball game is the point I'm trying to make. And so nice to see him back in there tonight. Mattia Reginato, meanwhile, Awaiting a 1-2 pitch from Antonio Nogueira, who beside that one missed spot to start this inning has been near perfect. He's given up a couple of doubles. He's only given up extra base hits tonight, as a matter of fact. Three hits, a double to lead off the second, a double with two outs last inning, and now the homer. Hasn't walked anybody. Comes home 2-2. Two -two. And it's popped up high in the air, first base side. That'll get into the seats. It's a big crowd tonight. Maybe even a bit bigger than last night's attendance, which was somewhere in the 2200 region. Obviously a Saturday night, a little bit of an easier time to get out to the ballpark. Two, two. Upstairs, full count. This one's driven out to left center field. Pretty good crack from Reginato, but it's hauled in by Beltre. And with the bases empty and two away now, John Andrioli will make his second trip. Tie and outside, one and nothing. If Andrioli is able to reach and extend the inning, then it'll be Gavin Cicchini batting, representing the tying run in this bottom, or rather top half of the fourth inning. 
That one jumping off the inside edge puts Andreoli ahead 2-0. He popped out to first just a couple of innings ago. The ball that Jesus Ustariz, Spain's first baseman, hardly had to move to get under. Two-zero again, high in the air, and again it'll stay in the yard. Beltre, a couple of hops to his right, and the side retired. One, two, three on the heels of Chris Colabello's leadoff bomb. But that's enough to get Italy on the board and send us into the bottom half of the fourth inning with Spain on top by a score of three to one. Monson, Ochoa, and Rodriguez here as he's driven one out to left field. That's a foul ball. A new approach here as we've seen a couple of first pitch swings in both halves of the fourth inning. Colabello launching one out of the yard, and this one given a long ride, just landing foul. Great shot there by our outstanding production crew. You saw it's maybe just a few centimeters from the chalk out there in front of the left field foul pole. Javier Monson who walked and scored in the second inning. Settles back in. And takes that one in the dirt, a ball and a strike. Bottom third of the order for Spain. It's been a steady onslaught from up and down the lineup. Almost everybody's been on base already for Spain. As this one's punched foul to level things at two and two. Angel Beltre, one of a few guys who hasn't been on base yet, is produced. Driving in a run with a sacrifice fly. Really well balanced lineup. And a high pop fly that'll stay in the infield. Balio comes in from second. And Blake Ochoa will be the one out batter now. Blake Ochoa, like so many players at this tournament, such a complete resume. One of the many players who's come tantalizingly close to the major leagues, a triple-A player at one point. Down nothing and one after that healthy cut results in a foul straight back. Ochoa, who's from Venezuela originally, played at the very beginning in the Florida Marlins organization, spent some time in the Seattle Mariners organization as well. 
Got to AAA back in 2010 with the Tacoma Rainiers. Takes a strike, he's down 0-2 here. He struck out looking in the second. It was a 3-2 pitch that he felt had missed. He chucked the bat and had taken a step towards first before he had to reroute, turn around and take a seat. And he checks his swing. It was the breaking ball that got him last time, though it was more of a slider cut fastball type pitch that got him. Not as bendy as that last pitch. Ochoa played in 299 minor league games. His busiest season, the 2007 season. At a number of different levels. 2-2 pitch. Fouled back again. Leo Rodriguez, the on-deck hitter. Classic minor league season for Blake Ochoa in 2007. He played for four different teams. As he was traded midseason from Florida to Seattle, or from the Marlins organization to the Mariners organization. He played for two different teams in North Carolina, one in Wisconsin, one in Washington, so all over the United States. And now 3-2 is cold, strike three, and that's the second time he's on, been on his way to first when he's been turned around. Two outs in the home half of the fourth. Three strikeouts now from Govea, who's really starting to settle into this outing. He had a rocky first couple of innings. Leo Rodriguez ducks under the pitch that seemed to slip for ball one. Rodriguez drove in Spain's second run of the night. Snuck a base hit, passed a drawn in Giuseppe Masanti. One and one. One and two. Angel Beltre waits in the on deck circle, hoping to make his third plate appearance of the game here in the bottom of the fourth. Haven't been a lot of quick at bats against Gurea. You got to credit the Spanish approach tonight. They've been patient. The ground ball to short could end the inning. Chikini charges and throws on the run. And that will do it. One, two, three goes Spain in the fourth. We'll move to the fifth. Spain leading Italy three to one.
Gavin Cicchini leading off against the 35-year-old left-hander who has his pitch punched out into right center field. And that'll be a leadoff single for Cicchini, his first hit of the night. A left-hander from Caracas, Venezuela. Who actually pitches in Bologna in the IBL. I recall when he came into the game on opening night against Israel, he got quite the hand from what are now his hometown fans. And you heard the reaction from the crowd when Gavin Cicchini ripped that single into right field. The crowd was kind of brought to life between innings when they announced the score of the game in Bologna, the game taking place right now between the Czech Republic and Israel as this wild pitch will move Cicchini over to second. Israel fell behind 1-0. Moved ahead 2-1 to one on a Danny Valencia home run, but now trails the Czech Republic 7-2 to two in the middle innings. And so if Israel loses tonight and Italy wins tonight, then there's still a possibility for Italy to win this tournament and with it earn a place in the 2020 Olympic Games. Good pitch from Nogueira for a strike. Bo Maggi the batter. A strikeout victim in the third. He's the only man who's gone down on strikes against Nogueira. Look back at second. And a ground ball right side, a nice high hop, a sliding pickup, a roll and a toss to first. Nicely done, Oscar Angulo. It hit something on its way out towards him that really slowed it up and popped it up in the air, and that might have been the difference maker, allowing Angulo to cover that ground. He had a long way to go, moving right to left. There's that high hop. And that's just a really pretty play there. And on the other side of it, it's a job well done by Maggi as he moves Cicchini from second to third where he stands with only one out. An RBI opportunity for Erica Pifano. Infield in. Outfield shifted slightly the other way. And a fly ball out towards right field. This will be a test. Is it deep enough? Monson makes the catch. Here comes Cicchini. The throw, the tag, and he's safe. Nothing but air for Blake Ochoa as the tag had him moving up the third base line, and it's a sacrifice fly that pulls Italy within one. If that throw from Javier Monson's a bit more accurate, then I think we're off to the bottom of the fifth. But as you see right there, Ochoa did his very best to try and swipe that tag on Cicchini as he ran by. But a nice job by Bo Maggi and Erica Pafano to move Cicchini from second to third and then third to home. And of course, the wild pitch certainly helped too. And I guess while we're doling out credit, let's give some to Cicchini for that line drive single into right center field to start the inning. Just the bottom third of the order doing a tremendous job to chisel away at Spain's lead. And now a pitch high and away, a ball and a strike on Drew Maggi. A double last time up. He grounded out to third in the first. Two balls and one strike to count. Two and two. The Israel Czech Republic game, meanwhile, is in the bottom of the fifth. Israel coming up trailing by five. They may have to put the champagne on ice if they can't find a comeback tonight. Three and two. 
Both pitchers being forced to work really hard tonight. Both veteran ex minor leaguers, Marilla Govea for Italy, Antonio Nogueira for Spain. Three and two, here it comes. Inside, ball four, and Drew Maggi's aboard for the second time in the ball game. First walk issued by Nogueira. And look how close it was. A slow walk out of the third base side dugout from Luis Soho. The skipper takes the baseball from Nogueira who gutted it out through four and two thirds but will depart one out shy of being eligible for the victory. Spain goes to the bullpen with the tying run on first and two outs in the top of the fifth. We'll tell you about the new pitcher in just about 90 seconds. Daniel Alvarez, the new pitcher, he comes in and throws strike one to Alessandro Valio batting with two outs and a man on first. Valio's grounded out to second and flown out to right. Alvarez, a prospect in the New York Yankees system. He's somebody who's got a lot of people watching him very closely here. And they're probably among the group not too pleased that he was only allowed to throw two warm-up pitches because of the way he entered the game. And with the clock running, there's a 90-second clock. And now what's this confusion? It's funny, there was an outcry from Spain's dugout when they learned that Daniel Alvarez would only be allowed to throw two pitches because the clock started before he crossed the white line. And by the time he was on the mound, he didn't have much time. So it's all in the name of pace of play. They don't let the guy warm up properly, but then we go into a delay for reasons that I can't quite ascertain. Drew Maggi had something to say. And this is not good. Gilberto Gerali is having a pretty lengthy talk with a couple of umpires. And it all started with something that was going on between Drew Maggi and the first, ba first base umpire, who I think is Trevor Grieve, but I'll check on that. And it's just interesting that, again, all that time, Alvarez could have been warming up. But now he's gotten ahead 0-2. He's a real flamethrower and somebody that New York Yankees fans are excited to watch continue to rise through the minor league ranks. From the belt, he delivers with Maggi off. 
And it's fouled back by Valio. So the count holds at 0-2. One of the reasons he was only allowed to throw two warm-up pitches is that one of them went to the backstop, so the time that was lost retrieving that ball kind of cost him a pitch or two. Luis Soho was really upset. Uh, throw to first, pretty good looking move from Alvarez. Trying to get out of the top of the half, top half of the fifth inning. With his team still ahead, 3-2. And it's popped up. This should end the inning. And the catch is made by Angulo, and that will do it for the top of the fifth. A run on a hit with a man left on first. After four and a half, Spain leads Italy 3-2 on a beautiful Saturday night here in Parma. Top of the order for Spain, Angel Beltre leading off. Left-handed hitting center fielder takes a ball high. As Murillo Govea continues into the bottom of the fifth inning for Italy. He's gotten better, it seems, with each progressive inning. He faced six in the first, five in the second, four in the third, and then three in the fourth inning. So. Really couldn't argue the fact that he's gotten better with each progressive inning. In fact, right now he's retired five in a row. And Beltre foul tips it back off of Bo Maggi's mitt before into the screen in front of us. So it's one and two. Beltre tonight, 0 for 1. He flew out to right field last time up, but drove in a run, got credit for a sacrifice fly. One oh breaking ball hammered to first knocked down by Masanti picks it up with the bare hand and scoots his way over to first for the first out of the inning. Edison Valerio. The third baseman who scored the game's first run. Does a little bit of housekeeping in the left handed batter's box. The chalks all but evaporated from the left handed and right handed boxes but that's why we'll take a break after the fifth. Allow the grounds crew to get out there and refresh the lines. Allow the umpires a little refreshment themselves. It's a part of Asian baseball that I was unaware of until four years ago at the Premier 12 in Taiwan to really take a, about a five minute break, sometimes even a little bit more, and a nice running grab made by Reginato. Crossing into foul ground for the second out of the bottom of the fifth. But they take that five minute break and 
Well, the ground screw is doing their work. Cheerleaders come out to amuse the crowd. Same thing gets done in Korea and Japan. And it's here in Italy, too, for the Europe-Africa Olympic qualifier. It's not quite a halftime. Baseball just doesn't have halftime. But I've started to think of it that way anyway. It just gives you t a chance to take a deep breath. And I don't know. There's something about starting a sixth inning after a little bit of a pause, especially when it's a close game, that adds a little bit of excitement. And we do have a close one going here tonight. 3-2 Spain scoring a run in the first, two in the second before allowing a run in the fourth and fifth innings to Italy. So the seesaw starting to tip down towards the visitor's side. Though Italy is, of course, playing here on home soil to the visitors in tonight's contest. That's a good pitch, meanwhile, from Gobea. Got the call anyway. And now two and one, flown foul first base side. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs, base is empty. Gobea is trying to make it eight in a row retired. Let's the ball hang in his right arm down by his right side now into the glove and home. And this one's cracked out to left center field, but moving over and back on it. Drew Maggi drops the ball. Wow, another error. Second of the night for Italy on a ball that should have ended the inning. And on second is Angulo. Maggi playing a bit out of position. He's been the third baseman the first three games of the tournament for Italy. But he's looked good in left field tonight. He nearly threw out somebody at home plate, but boy, he'll want another chance at that. And he dropped down into a crouch as soon as the ball had been sent back into the infield. Kind of a lonely feeling. And that'll be the last pitch that Gouveia throws. So the error, and otherwise it would have been eight in a row to end his night. And we'll tell you about the new Italian pitcher in just a moment. Matteo Bocchi, the new pitcher for Italy, inherits a man on second and deals with the cleanup man, Jesus Ustari. Spain already leading three to two, threatening to add a little bit more, and they may do just that. This one's headed towards the wall, and it will score Oscar Angulo. The very first pitch he sees goes all the way down the line and left into the corner. And it's 4-2 Spain. That pitch intended to be low and away, wound up tailing right out over the heart of the plate. Ustariz didn't miss it. And I have to shake my head because I guess that dropped fly ball in left field, which was an error, has been ruled a hit. And so that goes down as an earned run against Marilla Gouveia, which really isn't that big of a deal, but it's not an earned run that he deserves to carry out of this tournament, let me tell you that. And I'll just leave it right there, and here's Lester Galois. 
Galvan battled Gouveia back in the first inning, ultimately winning the battle after fouling off a handful of 3-2 pitches. He singled home the game's first run. His next time up, he popped out, and now he grounds it back to the mound. And a weird throw, but a good enough throw for the out that retires the side. So a run on a hit with an error and one left. We'll go into the sixth. We'll take a short break first after five. It's Spain four, Italy two.
Chris Colabello gets a nice hand as he settles into the right-handed batter's box, leading off the sixth inning, his team trailing by a pair, 4-2 the score. A fastball up and in from Daniel Alvarez, the second Spanish pitcher of the night. Alvarez, a really hard-throwing right-hander, part of the New York Yankees minor league system. Colabello, a former major leaguer with over 200 major league games to his credit. 2015 season, he played 101 games for the Toronto Blue Jays. He's been parts of four seasons in the major leagues. The 1-0, or rather the 2-0 pitch, is poured right in for a strike. The third inning, the only inning in which we haven't seen a run scored in this game. Spain went up 1-0 in the first, increased the lead to 3-0 in the second. We stayed that way into the top half of the fourth inning when Italy got on the board. 3-1 after four, it was 3-2 after the top of the fifth, but then a dropped fly ball in left field led to a run for Spain in the bottom half of the fifth inning. So here we are, four to two, four runs, six hits and an error for Spain, two runs, four hits and an error for Italy. Alabello's blasts. A solo shot leading off the fourth. The biggest hit of the night, and he goes down swinging as Alvarez got him with an off-speed pitch low. And he's kept off the base paths for the first time tonight. Really nice slider, and down on strikes for Colabello. Look at all the life on these Alvarez pitches. I mean, they never stop moving. That one exploding in towards Giuseppe Masanti. And this is a formidable trio here. And Alvarez is mixing up his pitches so well. Nicola Bello, Masanti, and Reginato is a big, meaty part of this order. Ground ball hit towards short, a few hops to Leo Rodriguez. He's got time to set himself and send it to first for the second out of the inning. And we'll see if Reginato can get something started here. Meanwhile, down in Bologna, things getting interesting. Israel trails the Czech Republic seven to three, but Israel batting in the bottom of the six has a couple of runners aboard with just one out. So that game is far from done. And the first pitch, meanwhile, here to Reginato is high for a ball. If Israel wins tonight, then we'll know that they're advancing to Tokyo 2020. It'll be the first time ever that Israel will have a baseball team in the Olympics. If they don't win tonight, they're still in control of their own fate tomorrow as they take on South Africa in each of those respective countries' tournament finales. Fastball just misses. Three and nothing now. South Africa is the only winless club at this point in the tournament, so even if Italy fails, or sorry, Israel fails to take care of business tonight against the Czech Republic, which as it stands right now, they're not taking care of business, even though if they lose, they can bounce back and play tomorrow afternoon for a chance to make it official. Very favorable last couple of days of scheduling, but you know, you looked at it on paper and thought, okay, tonight's probably gonna be the night, and now you've gotta say not so fast. Meanwhile, Reginato's taken a two out walk, so John Andrioli gets a chance here. He represents the tying run. He takes a strike. Alvarez steps off with a look over his shoulder at Reginato. Italy's right fielder doesn't have much of a lead at all. He could turn and flop back onto the first base bag. Ooh. That's called a strike. Oof. And now 
Mandriel who chases a pitch down in the dirt and that'll end the top of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, and a man left. Five and a half in the books. Spain leads Italy four to two. Fernando Martinez leading off for Spain and bouncing one up the middle. It's gloved by Cicchini who spins and gets it to first in time for the out. What a play to open up the bottom half of the sixth. The big smile from Martinez. That's the kind of play where you just tip your cap. Moving across behind the second base bag. Cicchini stabbing the ball, spinning and just barely getting it to first base in time. Now Spain does still have a challenge. They used it once successfully back in the first inning, but it appears as if they're not going to challenge that play at first, though on that replay you thought, well, maybe you want to have a second look. Instead, one pitch later, we have the second out of the inning. Two pitches, two outs. And a fine job being done out of the bullpen by Matteo Boki. Blake Ochoa, who twice went down looking at a called third strike, takes a look at strike one here. He was one of just two strikeout victims of the starter Marilla Gouveia, the other being Fernando Martinez. That's a strike and it's quickly nothing in two. And this could be a five pitch inning with one more strike as Ochoa is up against it here. Boki from the belt. Comes home. And that's strike three and it's a five pitch bottom of the sixth. Outstanding work. And we're off to the seventh, it's 4-2 Spain.
Here we go into the late innings, a game that got off to kind of a sluggish start is really picked up in terms of pace through the middle innings. And Gavin Cicchini checks in, takes ball one high. Cicchini, Maggi, and Epifano, the trio that began the fifth inning, which was a productive one for Italy. That's when they got their second run on the board. They'll need a few more, trailing Spain 4-2 after six. A couple of big time prospects here, and Cicchini and Daniel Alvarez. Alvarez, 23-year-old prospect in the New York Yankees minor league system from Barquisimeto, Venezuela. Rocks and deals, and a vicious breaking ball. Gets him strike two. Only 23 as of this past June, and already he's been as high as the AAA level. Cicchini here, another AAA guy, sends it to right, a diving effort from Monson, and he's lucky that ball didn't sneak by him. You'd be looking at Cicchini on third. Instead, he stays at first with a leadoff single. Just how he began the fifth. An opposite field leadoff single. And man, when you make the decision to dive, you better be sure you can at the very least knock it down. And credit Javier Monson, he did knock it down. But man, I don't think the risk reward calculation there warrants a dive. But he gets away with it. And now Bo Maggi, who has struck out swinging and grounded out to second. Were this a 3-2 game as it might be had his brother Drew caught a ball in left center field a few innings ago, then you might be looking at a sacrifice bun here, but you're gonna need a few base runners, which are tough to come by against Alvarez, who in his minor league career has held opponents to a batting average around the 220s, and I don't know why he didn't get a call there. That looked like a pretty good pitch. Steps off the back side of the rubber to look back, Cicchini. Three and nothing now on Maggi. Alvarez spent most of this year at the double-A level with the Trenton Thunder. Held opponents to a 195 batting average with Trenton. Serving primarily as the team's closer, he was able to convert 21 of 24 save opportunities. In 58 to third innings, he gave up just 41 hits. That's part of how you get that 195 batting average against. Also in the 58 plus innings, he struck out 76. Finished the year with a 7-2 record, a 2.31 earned run average, the kind of stuff that makes Major League scouts really salivate. And he's a guy that, despite the fact that he's just 23 years of age, will probably get a pretty thorough look from the Yankees next year at spring training. As he tries to battle back here against Maggi's, worked the count full three and two. I mean, that's a guy who's put himself in a position to make the Major Leagues at 23 years old, which he will be until next June. He made just one appearance at the AAA level, and it was an uneventful outing. Two thirds of an inning with nothing. From the belt, he delivers a 3 2. And now Spain's really getting upset, and you can understand why. There was a lot of kind of borderline pitches that Italy got in the bottom of the sixth and now some borderline pitches that Alvarez didn't get here in the seventh and I don't get it you can see that pitch is outside for sure but I think the reaction from the Spain dugout is more about consistency than that particular pitch just judging on what I'm hearing and it's starting to really become an every pitch type of vocalization Luis Soho himself, the manager, comes out of the dugout. Now recall that he was already upset with 
how it was handled when Alvarez came into the game when he was only allowed to throw two warm-up pitches. Alvarez himself was upset getting ready for this inning that he was told he only had one pitch left when he had more than 30 seconds left on the 90-second clock. So the frustrations mounting in every way for Spain. And Luis Soho is still vocalizing his displeasure as he heads back to the third base side dugout. Cicchini's a leadoff single and a walk to put him on second. Maggi behind him representing the tying run and now you're gonna see the bunt attempt from Epifano but he'll spin back out of the way. He'll hang out over the dish again, drop it down in front of home plate, throw goes to third, they'll get the out there and over to first, safe. Close play at first base. Nearly the 2-5-3 double play, you almost never see that and that's why it's near impossible to pull off. Not a good bunt from Epifano, a great throw from Ochoa. And good hustle from Eric Epifano to beat it out. But he fails to get the job done. Still first and second now with one out. Maggi's the lead runner. Drew Maggi's the batter. A single, a walk, and a fielder's choice. 2-5 put out at third base. And an exciting start to the seventh inning. As Italy's put the tying run on. First with nobody out, still with one out. Maggi rips it into left field. That's a base hit, and it could bring in a run. Here comes the throw towards the plate. It's cut off, and it's 4-3. Italy's got the tying run in scoring position with just one out in the top of the seventh. That's one way to make amends for that drop fly ball in left center. Now it'll be Alessandro Valio who tries to keep it going. He'll look to become the fifth straight Italian batter to reach base safely. Perhaps beyond that, more than anything else even, he'll look to avoid a double play so that Chris Colabello gets a chance here in the seventh inning with the tying and perhaps a going go-ahead run on board. Middle infielders pinch together up the middle. The 0-1 in the dirt. A ball and a strike. Drew Maggi having a nice day at the plate. He's been on three straight times, now has the RBI to go along with a double. He's got good speed on first base too, and there's a good breaking ball for a strike. One and two. Eric Epifano has pretty good wheels. He's the lead runner. You see him walking off towards third, being watched carefully by Alvarez ahead of the one-two pitch that's cut on and missed for strike three. Valio overmatched by Alvarez there. And here's the moment that could ultimately determine the way this game ends up. And what a moment we have before us. One of the most accomplished ex-major leaguers participating in this tournament, perhaps second only to Danny Valencia in Colabello, against one of the most exciting young prospects and perhaps the most exciting young prospect participating in the tournament in Alvarez. First pitch, a pop-up foul for strike one. Colabello reached on an error in the first, homered deep to left center field in the fourth. Struck out swinging in the sixth. You see him wearing that shield across his face. He was hit 
on the bridge of his nose with a fastball in the seventh inning last night. It knocked him out of the game. But he's back in there tonight. The 0-1. He goes around, and it's 0-2. Think about Alvarez is you just can't sit on anything. He's got at least three pitches that we've seen him use in any and all counts. There, the slider off the outside corner. A look at second. The 0-2. We'll do it again as Colabello fights it off to stay alive. Base hit could tie the game at four. Anything to the gaps, and you're looking at Italy taking their first lead of the night. Down the lines, too, especially in right where Monson is way off the line. The Spanish right fielder is essentially playing right center. Olabello well, definitely is a pull hitter. Alvarez ready, another 0-2. A ground ball hit to short. Leo Rodriguez goes to second, and they force out Drew Maggi and retire the side. A run back for Italy on two hits, but they leave two men. And we'll head into the bottom of the seventh with a one-run ball game unfolding in Parma. It's Spain four and Italy three. Leo Rodriguez leading off the home half of the seventh for Spain, and he takes strike one. It was a five-pitch inning, you may recall, in the bottom of the sixth for Mateo Boki. He got a ground ball on the first pitch, a fly ball on the second pitch, and then he struck out Ochoa. One, two, three more pitches. And now he's ahead of Rodriguez, 0-2. Rodriguez will roll it over to the top of the order again and see Beltre and there's a cold third strike nasty stuff from Matteo Boki. He finished off the fifth inning after the starter Marilla Govea went four and two thirds giving up all four runs and I guess four earned runs on six hits. Govea walked one sorry walked two and struck out three. Now here's Beltre, who drove in a run in the second with a sacrifice fly and takes a strike. He's 0 for 2 on either side of the sack fly. He's popped out to short and grounded out to first. 0-1, swing and a bounding ball. Right side, nice high hop for Valio. On the Masanti for out number two. I mean, literally nothing but strikes from Matteo Boki. Nothing in these last two innings. Not a ball, not a single one. It's not hyperbole. He's just a guy on the mound for Italy throwing all strikes. 
And here's Valerio. And I figured it was bound to happen sooner or later. Ball one, and you saw the reaction from Boki as he just snatches that ball out of the air. Now from the belt, he gets right back to it, and things go level at one and one. Our latest update from Bologna, from Stadio Gianni Falchi. They're in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Italy still trails the Czech Republic as that one got away and it hit Edison Valerio. It might have gotten him on the hand. That was an odd looking play. Did it get him up high? I'll need to see the replay because it was tough to tell in real time where it got him. Oh, it got him on the left hand, left wrist. That's a pretty vulnerable area. And you could tell immediately that Edison Valerio was in some pain, so he'll be worked on by the training staff before he takes his base which gives us time to look a little closer at the game in Bologna where they're in the bottom of the seventh inning and Israel trails the Czech Republic 7-4. to four. Israel's been chipping away at what was once a 7-2 deficit and they have the tying run at the plate and it's Nick Rickles who drove in four runs last night in Israel's 8-2 win over Italy. Rickles homered to give Israel a 2-0 lead early in the game and then singled home two more as a part of that six-run top of the eighth. He's batting with runners on first and second and two outs, but you don't want to hear me talk about it. Check out Tyler Maughan with the call on GameTime.Sport or the WBSC YouTube channel. What a ball game they've got unfolding there, and what a great one we have here too. Craig Durham, happy to have you along with me for it. The penultimate night in Parma. And with Valerio having taken his base, it's a first pitch swing and a long foul ball out of play for strike one on Oscar Angulo. Angulo, the second baseman, making his fourth plate appearance. Swings, grounds it up the middle. It takes a hop off the back side of the mound and winds up in center field. So a couple of two out base runners, the hit batsman and a single. And it seems like every time Italy pulls within arm's reach, Spain takes another step further away. Those are some big insurance runs on the base paths right now. Jesus Ustariz will make his fourth plate appearance. Two hits and an RBI to his credit already. And a late decision to head out of the dugout for Italy. It looked like Boki was just about set to get back to work, and then he had to step off. It's a good thing he didn't balk. And that's it. He's going to be lifted from the game. A surprising pitching change here with two outs and two on. And Spain on top of Italy, 4-3. to three.
Jesus Ustaris, the cleanup man, now facing the third Italian pitcher of the night, Alex Bassani. Bassani, who pitches domestically here in Italy for the Romini Baseball Club. Has his first pitch missed low for ball one. Romini, a coastal town in the northeast part of Italy. He's also pitched for Fort Tutto Baseball in Bologna. Working his, his way around the IBL. Set out the letters, he glances back at second and comes home. And another one down in the dirt. And I'm really still a little bit surprised that Matteo Boki was lifted from the game. He was pitching awfully well. He came out of the gate retiring six in a row before he hit Edison Valerio with two outs here in the bottom half of the seven. Then he gave up a ground ball up the middle that became a single, but that's all. Now you've got a guy who seems to be really fighting himself, at least after two pitches. But he writes the ship and pours in strike one. Spain has led this game since the first inning. Italy's pulled within one run once before. That was in the fifth, but Spain added a run in the bottom half to go up by two. There's a fly ball out to center field that should end the inning. Andrioli is under it. Hops to his left, reaches up, and makes the catch for the out that retires the side. So nice job done by Bassani, who strands two men aboard and sends us to the eighth. With the score, Spain four, Italy three. The legend himself, Giuseppe Mazzanti, leads off here in the top half of the eighth inning for Italy, a team trailing four to three after seven complete. Mazzanti was a part of Italy's 2004 Olympic baseball team, and he's still got an outside chance to be a part of the 2020 Olympics as well. Wouldn't that be something, 16 years apart? If Italy wins tonight and wins tomorrow and Get some help from the Czech Republic and South Africa. They could still win this tournament and with the win secure a berth in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, but it's always easier to control your own fate and there's a lot that must go Italy's way in addition to wins tonight and tomorrow, keeping in mind that they're losing 4-3. He takes a strike, meanwhile, it's three and one. The Israel-Czech Republic game has moved to the eighth where the Czech Republic still leads it seven to four. Three one pitch is high and Masanti takes a walk. And he's on base for the second time. And the tying run comes to the plate with none out. Daniel Alvarez continues to work on the mound for Spain and Masanti will give way to Sebastiano Poma, who comes in as a pinch runner. So Giuseppe 
finishes one for three with a double. And we'll see who decides, or we'll see who they decide will go play first base. I don't expect it will be Chris Carlobello. I think if he was going to play the field, he would have started there. He's been Italy's regular first baseman, but of course hit last night, so the DH tonight. And now Reginato takes ball one high after hanging his bat out over the dish in hopes of dropping down a sacrifice bunt. If Italy does not win this tournament, their Olympic dreams are not dead necessarily if they win tonight and then win tomorrow against the Netherlands. And actually, there is a scenario where they could lose this game tonight and win tomorrow against the Netherlands and still advance. So really no way to set up the outcome until the games have all been played tomorrow. And boy, do we hope they'll all be played tomorrow because it's supposed to be kind of a rotten day in terms of the weather. 1-1 pitch to Reginato is bunted. Fair, the throw goes to second and it bounces off a glove and into short center field. Leo Rodriguez was lunging, trying to keep his foot on the bag and take it in like a first baseman. The throw from Blake Ochoa was not perfect. It's a fair ball. And I think Rodriguez did absolutely everything he could to take that ball in. And that'll be an error. John Andrioli is the batter. Andrioli with a chance to tie the game with a single. He'll have a word down the third base line. Reginato reaches on the fielder's choice. They haven't put an error up on the board yet. Tough to get an error here in Parma. And there's a slider for a strike from Alvarez who's really going to have to bear down now. Valerio, the corner infielder at third, is in a step behind the base. Or sorry, a step behind the grass in front of the base. And now a swing, a pretty healthy cut too from Andrioli, and it's straight back into the screen, and it's quickly 0-2. Italy kind of bucking the trend they've established for themselves throughout the first or the last couple of games in the tournament where they've asked anybody to bunt. This is a situation that you would have thought screamed for a bunt. But instead, they'll let Andrioli swing away, and he's quickly gotten himself down in the 0-2 hole. Pretty good size lead off second for Poma. And a nice adjustment by Andrioli to foul that pitch away. He popped out to first in the second inning, flew out to center in the fourth and struck out swinging. Kind of a half-hearted swing that ended the top of the sixth inning. And he went down on three pitches. Now he waits for a second, 0-2. And he swings right through it. A big strikeout for Alvarez for the first out of the eighth. And here comes Jav Gavin Cicchini. Second, the pitch, high ball one. Cicchini tonight with two singles in each of his last two trips. 
A liner to the gap in right center in the fifth, a line drive to right field in the seventh that fell in front of a diving Javier Monson, who was able to pick it off the grass on a short hop after the dive. It was a really spectacular pickup that didn't really amount to much except saving face if he had gone after that ball the same way he did and had it sneak by him, then Cicchini would have, at the very least, I gotta believe, had a triple, if not an inside the park home run. He's got pretty good speed. Well, look at that first strike. One and one the count. First and second. And a foul back. Still kind of shaking my head at the fact that John Andrioli wasn't asked to bunt. Reginato did not get down a great bunt, but because of the throw from Ochoa that was offline, first and second with none out, you could have bunted the tying run to third, the go-ahead run to second with one away, instead the strikeout. And there's your lead runner, Sebastiano Poma, the Parma native. He's got his lead off second. 0-2. Down low. Twenty three year old from Venezuela. Shakes off one sign from Ochoa, now happy with the next come set. Comes home. And Chiquini spoils it as Alvarez is favoring the fastball here with men on in the top of the eighth inning. The game hanging in the balance. Spain out hitting Italy seven to six. They hold on to the slimmest of leads. A seventh hit from Italy would probably erase the lead. Breaking ball had Cicchini bailing out and then wound up pretty close to that inside edge. Three balls and two strikes. I thought the count was behind on the scoreboard, both in the stadium and in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. It's three balls and two strikes. A payoff pitch here. A look back at second. Here it comes. And Cicchini goes down swinging. Got another breaking ball. This one down in the dirt. Couldn't lay off it. And Alvarez has just got some filthy stuff. Almost looks like a split finger fastball. And now we see a trip out to the mound, not from Luis Soho this time. Rennie Duarte, the pitching coach, taking the walk out to have a word with his young stud. The batter will be Bo Maggi. He walked and scored last inning. Prior to that, he had struck out swinging and grounded out to second. What a disappointment it would be for the fans here in Parma, not to mention the Italian team in the first base dugout to start this inning with runners on first and second and wind up with nothing, needing just one to tie it in the top of the eighth. But unless Bo Magic can find his first hit of the night or another way to reach base, that's where we're headed. Alvarez exhales, delivers, and starts with the breaking ball. It's outside for ball one. That one slipped, and Alvarez checks his hand. The way he immediately looked down, you Start to think about a potential blister issue or something of that nature, but obviously that's not the case as he was 
quick to get right back onto the rubber. Now will have to find a good pitch, 2-0. And he goes to the heater for a strike. I think the way Maggie's looked up there tonight, you might want to challenge him again until he proves that you've got to go to the secondary stuff. 2-1. There's the fastball, and it's popped up. Right center field, not deep. In under it, Angel Beltre makes the catch, and that will end the top of the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, but two men left. And after seven and a half, it's Spain four, Italy three. Spain coming up, looking for some insurance. And we return. Lester Galvan leading off for Spain in the eighth inning. Bottom half of it. Spain leading 4-3. They'd love a run or two here and make things a little easier come the ninth inning. Italy threatened there in the eighth. They had runners on first and second. A tying run in scoring position with nobody out but failed to advance the runners. And now Galvan waits for Alex Bassani's. 1-0, which he skies into shallow center. And Andrioli with the catch for out number one. Galvan, who began the game with an RBI single in the first, is now one for four. And here comes Fernando Martinez. That hung up there a while on Andrioli. Looking ahead to the ninth inning for Italy, it'll be 9-1-2, which would be Epifano, Drew Maggi, and Alessandro Valio with the intriguing prospect of Chris Colabello batting fourth should anybody reach. Again, really behooves the Spanish side to add a run here in the bottom of the eighth. Good pitch. And very quickly, nothing in two on Martinez. Fernando's grounded back to the mound, struck out swinging and grounded out to short. Spain's DH hangs out over the plate and takes it low. Beautiful, cool evening here in Parma. You can feel the moisture coming into the air, though, as the clouds will roll in overnight and the rain's expected to begin in the late morning, early afternoon tomorrow. And now bouncing ball right side. Great job by Bassani to cover first. And that's the old 4-1 play for the second out of the inning. Sebastiano Poma himself stays in to play. No, sorry, that is not Poma at first. Poma goes out to left field. That's Drew Maggi playing first. After Poma came in to pinch run for Giuseppe Massani. 
Azanti in the top of the eighth. So Poma's at left, Maggi's at first. Two outs, base is empty. Javier Monson takes a curveball high. 1 0. Oh. Monson walked, stole second, reached third on a wild pitch, and came home on an RBI single back in the second inning. He tried to add a run with one swing there and wound up fouling it straight back. They've gone to the ninth inning in Bologna with the Czech Republic leading Israel seven to four. That would be an awfully big disappointment for Israel. To have to postpone the potential Olympic clinching celebration until tomorrow and be forced into a must win game on the fifth and final day of this tournament. We don't know if there'll be any adjustment to the schedule here in Parma. They've already announced that tomorrow's game scheduled to be played at 8 o'clock in Bologna between Italy and the Netherlands has been moved to noon because of the potential for inclement weather later in the day. The Israel-South Africa game here in Parma is scheduled to begin at 1.30, so if you were to adjust things, maybe you move that one to 12. And quite frankly, that would make a lot of sense. Tomorrow night's game between Spain and the Czech Republic, depending on the outcome of the noontime game, may end up being irrelevant. And while you do desperately want to play them all, that's the one game that you could potentially afford to lose tomorrow. But we'll leave all that for our Sunday in Parma and focus on a big pitch here, three and two. On its way from Bassani. A swing and a miss. A good time for a breaking ball that Monson guessed wrong on. And with that, we'll head into the ninth inning. Italy needs a run to tie it, two to take a lead. It'll be Epifano, Maggi, and Valio, and perhaps Chris Colabello when we return. The right-handed hitting third baseman, Eric Epifano, leading off in the ninth for Italy. The third pitcher of the night for Spain, Fernando Baez, takes over, trying to get the last three outs of the night. He's really got no wiggle room, though. And Epifano takes a strike as things level at one and one. Eric tonight has gone 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. And now a skipper. Makes it two and one. Baez, 27 years old, from Palenque in the Dominican Republic. Spent most of his affiliated minor league career in the Tampa Bay Rays organization. Misses high and wide there, falls behind three and one.
that Bufano almost has to take that 3-1 pitch, knowing that if you get on, you represent the tying run and give Chris Colabello a chance to bring you home. That's a good take, 3-1, and now he'll have to protect from the windup. Big pitch. Swung on and missed, strike three. Baez bounces back after falling behind three and one, and now he'll roll it over to the top of the lineup and take on Drew Maggi, who's been one of the toughest outs all tournament for Italy, with tonight being no exception. Maggi has doubled, walked, singled home a run. He also grounded out to third. That was in the first inning. I think he swung at the first pitch he saw tonight and chopped it to third. Takes the breaking ball away, and it's 1-0. That RBI single for Maggi in the seventh pulled Italy to within one at 4-3, to three where we remain. And now he's in the driver's seat. He's got a lot of power in his bat, too, so you've got to be careful 2-0 if you're Baez. Check swing and a high hard one, and it's one and two with the foul going back into the netting. I'll tell you what about Fernando Baez. He put together a pretty nice minor league career, and I find it a bit surprising it ended as quickly as it did, if it is, in fact, over for good. Didn't pitch professionally in an affiliated league in 2018 or 19, but in five seasons, he went 16 and 13 with a 328 ERA. Now it's 2-1. Opponents hit 191 against him in 119 minor league appearances, including 20 starts. He had nine saves. And here's his 3-1 pitch to Drew Maggi, and that's called a strike, and again, we have a full count. Not a big strikeout guy. I take that back. I was looking at the walks as strikeouts. He has had command issues. He's, he did walk 168 in 247 minor league innings. And now 3-2 pitch is low, and that's ball four. And there's the control issue. Emerging here in the top of the ninth inning, putting Maggi on first, moving Chris Colabello into the on-deck circle and giving Alessandro Valio a fifth chance to reach base safely tonight. He was so good last night on base three out of five times. 0 for 4 so far this evening. The right-hander deals, and the other right-hander takes the strike. So in those 247 minor league innings for Baez, there was 168 walks, but there were 331 strikeouts. Almost 100 more strikeouts than innings pitched, but just too wild. And again, it's a bit of a risky play to go with the wild man. And the Italian crowd likes their chances now with the tying run aboard. Baez throws to first. Maggi dives back in safely. Fly ball out to right field. That'll slice foul into and over Italy's bullpen. And the count to one and two. The final score in Bologna. We will head into the fifth day of this tournament without knowing who will go to the Olympic Games as Israel with a chance to seize it tonight. Lost 7-4 to four to the Czech Republic. A 1-2 pitch here is high, and it's 2-2. Two two. Kind of a stunning defeat for Israel, a team that has had everything go right through the first three nights of this tournament. They beat Spain 3-0. They blew out the Netherlands, the European champions, 7-1. They blew out Italy last night in the end, 8-2. But they falter on night four. And here's a fly ball to right center field. A long run for a few outfielders. The catch is made 
by Javier Monson, however, and Maggi has to scamper back to first. Spain's one out away from a second victory in the tournament, a victory that would pull them even with Italy into a third place tie. And actually it would be a three-way third place tie, considering the fact that the Czech Republic by beating Israel tonight is now two and two. So you've got Israel and the Netherlands at three and one, the Czech Republic at two and two, and if Spain wins this game, Spain and Italy at two and two as well with South Africa at 0 and four. Remember, Israel plays South Africa tomorrow and on paper, that's a game that Israel should win, but we don't play these games on paper. That'll be played here at Stadio Nino Cavalli at a to be determined time, depending on the weather. It's looking like maybe 12 o'clock noon. Here's Chris Colabella with the game on the line. He swings at the first pitch, sends a two hopper to short. It's bobbled, but there's time for Rodriguez to go to first.